So welcome out to the field. We're gonna look at some Enlist soybeans and some Enlist corn. We have six different blocks out here. Most of the day will be spent on the soybean side, but we're gonna spend a little time on the corn and talk about Enlist corn and what's unique about the, the Enlist corn and, and the Enlist weed control system on corn. We also have three trait tolerances, but they're a little bit different than soybeans. It's got 2,4-D choline trait tolerance. It also has a glyphosate trait tolerance, and it also has FOP tolerance. So we talk about the 2,4-D, what's interesting is people already know you can spray 2,4-D on corn. I've been doing it for years. You're talking at real small corn. A lot of people use 2,4-D at brown silk to get some emerge late, late in the season, kill some weeds uh, that way. So we talk about the Enlist system. When we got that 2,4-D trade in Enlist corn, it is complete tolerance from seed to maturity. So you're not limited to very small corn. It's got that complete trait tolerance, just like it would have complete trait tolerance to glyphosate, for instance. So when we talk about timing of spraying 2,4-D on Enlist corn, we can spray over the top, so your boom can be right over the top of the corn, up to 30-inch corn or through the V8 stage. When you're talking about corn taller than 30 inches, you can use drop nozzles from 30 to 48 inches. So you got about 30 inch corn, you can spray right over the top. You can go up to 48 inch corn with drop nozzles. That is the exact same timing as been on Roundup Ready corn since 2001. That is the exact same timing as glyphosate on Roundup Ready corn. So that's very beneficial. So we talk about the trait tolerances. We got the glyphosate, we got the 2,4-D choline trait tolerance, we also have FOP tolerance. So what is a FOP? Typically, when you think of a FOP herbicide, you're thinking of a herbicide that controls volunteer corn and soybeans. Currently, Assure 2 is the one FOP that is labeled for use on Enlist corn. When I do our plots here, each plot is gonna be six rows wide. And in some cases, we spray all six rows. In some cases, we only spray the middle four. But in the corn block here, we sprayed all six rows. So the first block here is we have Roundup Ready corn. So it does not have the 2,4-D trade in it. It's not Enlist corn. And we sprayed a 2X rate of Enlist Dual. So we use two pounds of actual active 2,4-D per acre. That's like a half a gallon LB4 as far as equal amounts of 2,4-D. You know what happens when we spray, we we're spraying about 20, 22 inch corn over the top. If you don't have that Enlist trait, you know what can happen to corn. We had a lot of snap corn. You can see a lot of dead plants in here because when it got windy, 2,4-D on that tall of corn, if it doesn't have the 2,4-D trait, it gets, becomes very brittle. You get a lodging, a lot of lodging. You get a lot of leaning stalks. You also get brace root malformation. So a 2X rate on non-enlist corn, round of pretty corn here, uh, we're seeing a lot of that symptomology in this corn. Then what we wanted to do is we want to show that same 2X rate to extra legal rate on Enlist corn. And if you look at the Enlist corn out here, since it's got total trait tolerance from seed to maturity, and you can spray up to 30 inches right over the top, we had no leaning, no, when it got windy, we had no snapped off stalks. We're not gonna get any brace root malformation. It has complete tolerance to that 2,4-D trait. So that's the advantage of using it. When, you know, a lot of folks are not using 2,4-D on their corn currently. We have a lot of great options for broadleaf weed control when you're talking about water hemp, ragweed, palmer, kochia. You got a lot of different options right now, weed control options. But as time goes on, we're getting more and more resistant weeds. You may look at some enlist corn so you can use 2,4-D as one of your broadleaf, um, one of your broadleaf trips across the fields. The next block here, the third block, what we did is just use a normal program. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about it in soybeans, but it's also critical in corn. We want to make sure we're using a pre-emerge herbicide that has residual. So we got different modes of action out there. In this scenario, we use Resicor, three different modes of action, three different active herbicides in Resicor. We did two and a half pints per acre as a pre-emerge program. Then we followed up with 4.75 pints of Enlist Dual. And that's the one X rate that you'll be using. This is a traditional program. You could use Sure Start Pre-Emerge, Resicor, and then come back in with either Enlist One with a tank mix or Enlist Dual. And that's what we did here, just a common recommendation that we'll be using in corn uh, in the future. This is where it gets unique. This is where we're going to talk about something different that no other corn has. 
is we have FOP tolerance. So you talk about FOP tolerance, what we use here is a Sure 2 because a Sure 2 is labeled for use on enlist corn. So what we did here is we planted enlist corn and then we hand planted volunteer corn in it that's Roundup Ready corn. Why would this be important? Let's say this fall we have a very challenging harvest. Corn stalks go down, we got a lot of dropped ears, poor weather. We expect a lot of volunteer corn the following, this, following, this coming spring. So we know we're going to have a volunteer corn issue in our corn. So if we, plant, if we want to go corn on corn, we can plant and list corn, use a Sure 2 to kill a volunteer Roundup Ready corn the next year. Much like you would use a Sure 2 to kill volunteer corn and soybeans, we can do the same thing now in corn. Something that no, nobody else has, it's pretty unique. Another unique thing about having that FOP tolerance in enlist corn is there are several states, mostly in the southern U.S., but there are areas where you have glyphosate resistant grasses. So the grasses are just as resistant to glyphosate as some areas that have water hemp and the water hemp's resistant or palmer's resistant. So down south, but we'll have the option of using a Sure 2 or a FOP herbicide just to control annual and perennial grasses. So they can go in and they'll spray a Sure 2 on enlist corn and kill any grass that would happen to be resistant to glyphosate if the glyphosate isn't going to pick it up. The next question we get from a sharp grower, and we get it at every tour, is they'll ask, okay, I got enlist corn planted. Obviously, I've been using Fusillade or a Sure 2 for years to control my volunteer corn and soybeans. If I have enlist corn as my volunteer next year in beans, how am I going to control it? Because it's going to have that FOP tolerance. So you'll have to switch over to a dim, a clethodim type herbicide. So that's what we showed over here. We're showing this is enlist corn sprayed with clethodim. So we use actually Select Max, 12 ounces per acre. And this is how you would control volunteer enlist corn in soybeans the next year. And you can see it's doing a very good job. You can always, you can always pull it up. You can see the rotting at the growing point. It's all rotted out. And that's exactly what a clethodim will do to uh, volunteer corn. So you use a FOP to control it, to control grasses and corn. When you have volunteer enlist corn, you use a clethodim type product to control the volunteer enlist corn. Mm -hmm.